a very surprising find, Yellowstone supervolcanic ash turned to lava miles from its eruption. This is what scientists have found. The pyroclastic flows of ash from the heat actually turned the ash into flowing lava. And this is what it looks like. This is what Sometimes we see things like this, we don't know how they got to be like that. This is the ash that has turned to lava, and this is an area of what has been found in Idaho. Yellowstone eruption, ash flow. Supervolcanoes such as the one sitting dormant under Yellowstone, Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, are capable of producing eruptions thousands of times more powerful than normal volcanic eruptions. Supervolcanoes don't act like normal volcanoes. While they only happen every several thousand years, these eruptions have the potential to kill millions of people and animals due to the massive amount of heat and ash they release into the Earth's atmosphere. Now researchers at the University of Missouri have shown that the ash produced by supervolcanoes can also be so hot that it has the ability to turn back into lava once it hits the ground tens of miles away from the original eruption. Following a volcanic eruption, lava typically flows directly from the site of the eruption until it cools enough that it hardens in place. However, researchers found evidence of an ancient lava flow tens of miles away from Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption that occurred around 8 million years ago. Previously, Graham Andrews, an assistant professor at California State University at Bakersfield, found that this lava flow was made of ash ejected during the eruption. Following Andrews' discovery, Alan Whittington, an associate professor at the University of Missouri, Department of Geological Science at the College of Arts and Sciences, along with lead author Genevieve Robert and Yi Yang Yi, both doctoral students in the Geological Sciences Department, determined how this was possible. During a supervolcanic eruption, pyroclastic flows, which are giant clouds of very hot ash and rock, travel away from the volcano at typically 100 miles an hour, Roberts said. And uh, Roberts explained, Genevieve Roberts explained, we determined the ash must have been exceptionally hot so that it could actually turn into lava and flow before it eventually cooled. Because the ash should have cooled too much in the air to turn into lava right as it landed, the researchers believe the phenomenon was made possible by a process known as viscous heating. Can you imagine how hot it must have been to turn back the ash into lava? I mean, very viscous is the degree to which the liquid resists flow. The higher the viscosity, the less the substance can flow. For example, Water has a very low viscosity, so it flows very easily, while molasses has, has a higher viscosity and flows much slower. Whittington likened the process of viscous heating to stirring a pot of molasses. She said, it's very hard to stir a pot of molasses, and you have to use a lot of energy and strength to move your spoon around the pot. Whittington said, however, once you get the pot stirring, the energy you are using to move the spoon is transferred to the molasses, which actually heats up a little bit. And this is viscous heating. So when you think about how fast the hot ash is traveling after a massive supervolcanic eruption, once it hits the ground, that energy is turned into heat, much like the energy from the spoon heating up the molasses. This extra heat created by viscous heating is enough to cause the ash to weld together and actually begin flowing as lava. The volcanic ash from this eruption has to be at least 1,000 500 degrees Fahrenheit to turn into lava. However, since the ash should have lost some of the heat in the air, the researchers believe viscous heating accounted for to, from 200 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit in additional heat to turn the ash into lava. This was from the University of Missouri, Columbia by Robert Andrews, Yi and Whittington paper published in Geology and it's uh, on phys.org. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media.
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.